Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel where we talk about all things fragrance and things that smell amazing. If you are new here, my name is Sinead. Welcome to my channel. Let me tell you guys, it's been a long time. It's been a couple of months and I'm getting back into the content, so forgive me. For today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my fall favorite fragrances. So if you're interested in seeing my go-to fragrances, just keep on watching. So guys, I have about two, four, six, eight, ten. I have 10 fragrances here that I'm going to share with you that are my go-to fall fragrances. For the fall, I like those heavy but kind of sensual fragrances but not too deep. So I'm kind of going to give you what I wear. So let's go ahead and start off. The first one that I want to share with you guys, as you can see, it's kind of almost gone. This is one of my favorite Chanel fragrances. This is Coco Mademoiselle. Not to be confused with the intense version, but this is just the EDP version. I think there is a parfum version as well, but this is just the regular version of it. It does have rose in it, Bulgarian rose, and it has patchouli and it has orange. So I have my testers here, so I won't be spraying just in the air. Guys, this is definitely a compliment getter. It is very arrogant, um, I would say arrogant. It's very elegant in my opinion. Every time I wear it, I get compliments. Now, what I will say is that you don't have to overspray this fragrance because it can make people sneeze or become a little offensive if you do. To me, this is like the epitome of like jean jacket weather. Every time I have a jean jacket on, I have this fragrance. And as you can see, I mean, I use it all the time. So I love it. One thing about it, when you are wearing this fragrance, it automatically is like a mood lifter. Like it automatically makes me feel better or makes my day go a little bit smoother just by smelling this fragrance. It is not that overpowering, but like I said, if you just keep spraying and spraying, it can definitely become nauseating. I think because of that rose, because it does have a little powderiness to it. But one thing about this fragrance, it is a clean floral but it has the patchouli in it. And it's kind of like, not that heavy, dirty patchouli, but it's that patchouli that's just right. So this is Coco Mademoiselle, just the EDP version of it. The next one is gonna be the flip side of the Coco line. So this is Chanel's Coco Noir. So just hold on, don't let the packaging fool you. So this particular fragrance, it has jasmine, it has vanilla, and then it has rose in it. So I wear this one typically during the fall months. This one is like my go-to one. I usually wear the Coco Mademoiselle in the day, and then the Noir I wear at the night. This particular fragrance, I would say it is a sweet, ambery rose. It can be very seductive, but then it can be rich and elegant at the same token. This one is not as easy to get as the Mademoiselle. The Noir, a lot of department stores don't even sell anymore. So I got this one from Sephora. You do have to search for it a little bit, but this one is one that I really like. Now, the Noir and the bottle, which is black as you see, it does kind of come off like when, you're, when you look at this bottle, you're thinking, oh, it's probably like sexy and powerful and all those things like, oh, it's black. And the Noir, you kind of think of heavy. That's not that's not what this is at all. So it is kind of misleading. But what I will say is that this scent is not for every day. It's kind of like for special occasions. Um, just in my opinion, I would say it's not really a powerhouse. So don't think of it like that. Just because you see the black bottle, that's not what it is. Um, it's not meant to gravitate or get attention. Like the uh, Mademoiselle, I always get compliments. This one's kind of like it's okay it's not all that but I like it for the fall because it kind of gives me that amberness to it and not as far as like the orange and patchouli um one thing I will say it does give you a strong boost of confidence so kind of like my cocoa scents or my Chanel scents always make me feel like I'm in a good mood but a lot of people don't really like the Chanel scents because they can come off a little bit powdery but I'm telling you give this one a chance and it's really good. It doesn't get a lot of attention, but I say go out and smell it if you can in your department store. So this one is Coco Noir. The next one I want to share with you guys is an inspired scent that I picked up recently. This is Alt Peach Smash. Now, Peach Smash. So it, it does come in this little bottle. I think it is so cute. Now, just give me a second while I say this, right? I got this scent because it is supposed to be a replica or kind of like... Um, an inspired scent of Tom Ford's Bitter Peach. 
I don't have it just yet, but I wanted to actually purchase one um, because I heard good things about this one. It was very close to the original. I have smelled the original, and I will say it is just as good. This one has blood orange, heliotrope, cardamom, cognac, jasmine, and rum, patchouli, sandalwood, vetiver, tonka bean, and vanilla. So, with all that being said, I have the notes in front of me. That is a whole lot for just one fragrance. And I wanted to smell if it was close to the Tom Ford Bitter Peach. Now, what I will say, this is a warm, kind of pepper, musk, incense, vanilla, peach. When you think of a peach scent, because it's called Peach Smash, it is not the ripeness of the peach. It kind of is that sexy undercore of a peach, like that dirty peach in a sense. It is not bright. It is not that juicy peach. Not at all. It's really sexy in my opinion. I wear it in daytime. I haven't had the um, experience of wearing it at night. But one thing I will say is it lasts a long time on the skin. So you don't have to worry about it. Just because it is an inspired scent, it does really last you a lot. It is a beautiful scent. I know a lot of people do say they wear it at night. I just haven't. I only wear it during the day. Let me tell you, the lasting power, incredible. So if you have um, the Tom Ford Bitter Peach, I want to know the lasting power compared to this. So I am planning on doing a video on that when I get that fragrance in the mail coming. One thing I will say, this is a very deep and sexy scent. In my opinion, can it be unisex? Yes. But I would say it can lean more of the feminine side because of that peach note in it. Um, but of course, you guys know that I love vetiver. I love tonka bean. So when I get that deafness or that sexy in it, in the undertone, it's definitely something for me. So fall, definitely daytime, I would say where it's kind of like a peachy jam. That's how I can say it. it's not that bright jam. It's like, um, I mean, it's not like that brightness of a peach. It's like the jamminess of a peach. So that is all, and that is peach smash. The next one I want to share with you is my favorite. I want to say, well, one of my favorites out of all of these, and you'll see why just by the bottom. The next one is Waya Cells Libre Intense. Guys, look at how much I've used. It's basically gone. And I am in the works of getting a 3.4 ounce. This is just a one ounce because they don't actually have a middle um, when it comes to the intense version, which kind of makes me upset, but it's okay, cool. So you kind of get the small one or the big one. And as you can see, yeah, I'm getting going to get the big one. Guys, this is it. Look at just the presentation of the bottle. It is so good. This is like orange blossom. It has... The orange accord in it and then it has your lavender essence i don't even want to waste it but on you guys of course i will i definitely have to get the full this is full size bottle worthy i'm telling you it's classy it's sexy sexy it's seductive every time i go out i get a compliment all the time on my skin my chemistry this last in my hair and my clothes i smell it on my bags my jacket my car it smells and one time i went out on a date and i literally was just walking and the guy was like it's following you like this is a this it is that good i'm telling you guys you gotta get it it's that delicious vanilla um that i love in the fragrance but it has the vanilla so that it's like smooth it's not cloggy at all this is a great scent I do get that lavender note in the beginning, but it doesn't have that powderiness to it. Just my opinion, it's the creamy and smoothness of the vanilla. Long-lasting, ladies, I'm telling you. You will love it. If you wear, you know, your fragrances for men, they will love it. Get it. I'm telling you. The original, it wasn't for me. You guys saw the video. The original wasn't for me, but I do have it in a travel version if I kind of want to spray it every now and then. But this intense... This is it. If you don't get anything I tell you today, get the Libre Intense YSL. I'm telling you, go get it. The next one I want to share with you guys is one that I got a few years ago. And I liked it because of the packaging. Let's be realistic. But I got it because of the scent after a while. This is Balenciaga's and this is Flora Botanica. At one point, a lot of people did talk about it. But not as much as they 
you know, originally did. To me, this is a fall scent. And as you can see, I'm kind of almost done. I think this is the one ounce as well, or either a 1.7. Can't remember, but I got this as a present um, about two years ago. Guys, I don't know why I keep spraying these in the air because I'm going to have a headache. As soon, like, this screams leather jacket. Like, when you put this on, you have booties on, you have a leather jacket, black jeans, all black outfit, red lip. That's what this screams to me. This has rose. It has mint, cannabis, vetiver, and amber. This is a green scent. It actually makes you feel like you're in a green garden full of beautiful flowers. That's how I get it. It's a fresh green floral scent. Now, the green is not like grass dirt. It's more so in that crisp, fall, airy green, if you get what I'm saying. Of course, the cannabis kind of, you know, mellows you out a little bit, but I don't really pay attention to it. I just like the fragrance, and then, of course, it has the vetiver. That's one of my favorite um, notes in a deeper fragrance is vetiver, so, of course, I'm going to fall in love with it. It is a unisex scent. I would say, in my opinion, I think a man could wear this just as easily as a woman because it doesn't have those harsh feminine notes that some fragrances do. But doesn't lean a little bit more feminine? Yes, in my opinion, I would say so. It's a re um, an easy reach for me. I wear this day. I can wear this night. It just depends on how I feel. But, of course, in the fall, I definitely pick this up a lot more. I'm telling you guys, it's an herbal floral scent that just makes you feel uplifting when you're wearing it. So, what I say clean floral scent of course floral botanica just like the name says they don't really sell it too much you're gonna have to search for this one that's why i kind of wear it sparingly because i don't really see people talk about it or they don't even have it in department stores anymore but i love the packaging of it it is great as well the next one i want to share with you guys is a small bottle that got my collection last year this is jimmy choo jimmy chu the edp version i got mine from ulta i don't know if they sell it in sephora i don't think so i think it's just an ulta that's where i got it from this is just a 1.3 ounce as you can see some of my fragrances i get the little bottles because i have so many fragrances in my collection that just 18,000 3.4 ounce bottles i'll never finish them and i like to wear my fragrances so the juice is kind of getting down so i really appreciate that with this one you're going to get pear you're going to get orchid and you're going to get patchouli this one i can definitely see as a signature scent when i first smelled it that's initially what i thought of it it is a soft sexy noticeable scent but what i will say is the sillage on this and the longevity is so amazing so in this particular fragrance i would say it's very warm it's very comforting for those fall and winter months when you have that cool crisp weather but then on the other hand it's kind of a light and airy scent and the patchouli on this is great i'm talking about dirty this is that dirty earthy patchouli that i like in fragrances it is so good you do get the pear that is in the opening so you kind of get that fruitiness that brings a freshness to that fragrance but i'm telling you you're going to get that patchouli. That's what is the heavy hitter. So if you don't like patchouli at all, this fragrance isn't for you. Definitely a nighttime scent. I personally would not wear this during the daytime because it can be a little cloggy. And I will say that you don't have to spray a lot of this because a little bit does go a long way. The next fragrance I want to share with you is one I don't really hear people talk about, but I heard my girl, um, Rosita Applebaum. She's here on YouTube as well. This is... Juliet has a gun and this is Moscow Mule. This is perfect for the fall. It has ginger, it has lime, and also it does have mint. So uh, ginger, lime, and jasmine, I'm sorry. Yes, if you like Moscow Mules, Moscow Mule is one of my favorite drinks. So as soon as I smelled it, I was like, I got to get it. I got this at in, like one of those boutiques that you find like inside of a mall. I didn't see it at a department store. Um, I know they do have it on Sephora. I would say, guys, whoo, this is good. Now, one thing I kind of, I just want to let you guys know, because I always give you the truth, it doesn't last a long time. So you're going to have to spray and spray and spray and spray and spray and retouch and spray and spray and spray. But for me, because this scent can be cloggy, because if you ever tasted a Moscow Mule or even kind of just sniffed it, 
you kind of get that like overpowering powderiness of a Moscow Mule. That's that's just my opinion. So for me, also just like my um, Flora Botanica, I kind of grouped them in the same thing. Leather jacket all the way, an all black outfit. You just spraying this. Yes, it is a big bottle. I think this is a three point. This yeah, three point four. Um, you can't. I haven't really used that much, honestly. So. I like to spray and spray and spray this and I'll just put it in my purse or put it in the car and just, you know, retouch how I see fit. I don't think there's a travel size of it, but I could be wrong. I just don't have it in my collection. It is a pleasantly fresh citrus go-to scent. I would say I do wear this in the nighttime as well as the day. I kind of see this as like a going to the bar scent. So I'm going to get cocktails with the girls or friends or just hanging out. I'll just spray this, going to get sushi. Do nothing crazy. It's just I want to smell good. It's an easy reach. It's a fresh. It smells like a drink. It smells like not like in the stickiness of a drink. We you know how like somebody might throw one on you. I hope not. But <laughs> you know, that that's what it is. Um, I love it. A musky citrus perfume. That's literally what it is. You, with this, you're gonna get a crisp, um, a crispness, herbal, fresh. But with this one, you're gonna get a musky citrus. So just keep that in mind, okay? So the next one I want to share with you guys is a little controversial. Some people like it and some do not. This is Lancome's Idol. So with this one, it has jasmine, absolute, rose, musk, and vanilla. A lot of people have a controversial issue about it because they say it doesn't last long. In my opinion, I don't really need it to last long because what I'm using it for. This for me is my go-to signature fall work scent. I wear this only in the fall at work. So as you can see, I use it so much because it's usually in my work bag all day, every day. I'll go into a meeting, spray it. I'll go to lunch, I'll spray it. I'll wear it at the end of the day, spray it if I'm going to get cocktails or first thing in the morning. So for me, I'm using this every day at work. One, it's not offensive at all. It's just a straightforward fragrance. It's not complex and I don't need it to be that. One thing, the opening consists of like that, to me it smells like that, like a juicy pear. That's what it, the opening smells like to me. Not a complex scent. It is very light and musky, but it's a floral scent. So you don't have to spray it OD. Um, the sillage and longevity is just okay. I'm going to be real with you, but I don't need all my fragrances to do above and beyond. And this is one of those fragrances where it's just simply good without all the extra notes. It lasts okay. So if you don't want to smell like this all day or you might be offensive when you're like in a meeting, which I don't think it is because I only wear it in close settings and I never had anyone say it's overpowering. But for me, this is my work scent. It goes in my work bag. I don't wear it outside. So I really use it for that specific instance. The next one is one of my, it's a good scent. I don't want to say favorite because I don't want, you know. So this is Bal de Freak by Byredo. This one is good too. I have the smaller version of it. They have it in a bigger one, but this is just 1.6. Guys, this is my easy reach scent that I wear in the house when I'm running errands, going to get gas. Look, I, I wear fragrance all year round. I could be going to the gas station and I, I'll wear fragrance. So it doesn't matter. I can go to 7-Eleven. I'm wearing fragrance. It doesn't matter. This has lemon, black currant, bergamot, jasmine, violet, vetiver, amber, musk, and cedar. This, to me, smells like a luxurious hotel, which I'm in. So this is a great scent. The vetiver is one of those notes that is the powerful note in this fragrance and it stands out the most. It lingers on your skin forever, but this to me is like a comfortable scent that I can wear as an easy reach. And that's why I love it so much because I can just throw it on and be walking around the house and that's why I like it. It is super strong in the initial spray. It has a sharpness to it, but as it settles down, the perfume becomes woody and sweet. I do like it a lot. It is a clean, if I could, a clean, sweet, fresh, woody scent. That's what this is. Bal de Flick, I think everyone has heard about it. It is great. And then let's look at this. this here are the cap. Perfect. Love it. The last one that I'm going to share with you guys, and you know, 
I think that if it lasts, it should be good. This one I was recommended by my girl Keiko Beauty here on YouTube. She's amazing. Check her channel out. I love her. She is great. She put me onto this last year. I was looking to buy MFK's Oud Satin Mood. I didn't really want to pay the like $250, $300 for the small bottle. I just wasn't at that point where I wanted to buy it because I didn't know if I was going to use it like that. She recommended I try this one out. This is Nina Ricci's and this is Lextas Rose Absolute. That was my one minute to give you guys. Go get it. I'm just going to tell you. This, guys... It's nothing, okay, I take it back. This reminds me of Oud Set and Mood, but the difference between Oud Set and Mood is Oud Set and Mood is Oud and Rose. And this one, the Rose Absolute, is Rose and Vanilla. It is so good, guys. The notes in this are pink and black pepper, rose, benzoin, vanilla, patchouli, and musk. Guys, I'm telling you, if you love the Oud Set and Mood, but you just need like a little bit of femininity to give to it, like, because let's be real, Oud Set and Mood is very heavy by MFK. And sometimes you just need a little bit of, you know, something just to lighten it up just a tad bit. That is this. I got this off Fragrance Net, and let me tell you, I have a lot to go, and I plan on using it sparingly because this is always out of stock. Always. And when something is always out of stock, girl, I'm going to get it because I want to be in the hype just like everybody else. And the reason why is because this is amazing. Now, what I love about it is because the quality of this fragrance and the price tag do not match. The price of this was like $30 to $40. Ooh, Set and Moo is like $300 and the quality is impeccable. I'm telling you guys. This is a sensual gourmand rose and it is a jammy rose. I'm telling you, it is so good. It lives up to the hype. It lives up to the hype. And if you are a lover of those deep, sexy, sexy, <laughs> sexy, sensual roses... Oh my god, they're like jammy at the same time. You gotta get it. Highly recommend. Highly recommend, guys. And that is the last one that I have for my fall go-to fragrances. Guys, let me know in the comments section down below what are some of your go-to fall fragrance scents. I want to hear all about it. I love this particular season. Fall is my favorite, favorite season season so i always like to hear what people are smelling like and if i'm missing something or let me know what you think about these any of the ones you don't like or you love them as well i'm dying to hear down in the comments section if you like this video don't forget to hit the like button down below also don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the vibe over here you can follow me on instagram at the style of sense and until the next video guys bye